Welcome to my channel, I'm Gary Wuryawan and today I'm doing a long-term review of this little lens right here. This is the Olympus 45mm f1.8. Let's go! So today I'm doing a long-term review of the Olympus 45mm f1.8. I already owned this lens from so many years ago back when I started to switch to micro thirds from Canon APS-C DSLR. This was one of the first few lenses that I bought for my micro thirds camera system. However, at that time, I don't really use this lens a lot because to be honest with you, I just don't take that much portrait photography anyway. But recently, I started to do this everyday photography challenge where I try to force myself to do photography almost every day to spend some time trying to take some interesting shots every day and I started to take portraits of my wife as well quite regularly when I'm doing the everyday photography challenge. By the way, you can check those vlogs right here where I do my everyday photography challenge and because I started to take portraits of my wife more often than I started to look for a small but capable lens that can do portrait really well and the Olympus 45mm is the answer right there. This lens has a focal length of 45mm in micro four thirds terms so that is about 90mm in full frame terms. It's quite a really nice sweet spot for portrait lens in my opinion. It's not too long like 75mm or 100mm in micro four thirds which in my opinion it's a little bit long and maybe it's more useful for kind of headshot kind of stuff but this is more like for a half body portrait you can really isolate the subject and the working distance between you and your subject is not way too far. The aperture of this lens is f1.8 which is quite standard for many prime lens. Some prime lens of this focal length might have larger aperture like f1.4 or f1.2 but I find out that f1.8 is nice enough to blur the background and also to work in lower light situation as well. As I said with many other small little lenses that I currently use frequently for my everyday photography, this is another perfect example of embodiment of the original micro thirds philosophy. This lens is small, it is lightweight, the image quality is quite nice, and also it is relatively inexpensive. So yeah, this is really the original micro thirds philosophy before they start to go bigger and bigger and heavier with their cameras and lenses. Taking a closer look at the design of this lens right here, the Olympus 45mm f1.8 is quite clean, it's quite simple and also minimalist. There's no switches, there's no buttons, only this manual focusing ring and also there's this removable bayonet mount cover. I suppose with the bayonet mount over here, you can attach a lens hood. However, this lens doesn't come with the lens hood in the box, so you have to purchase it separately. Now let's talk about the usage of the Olympus 45mm f1.8. As I mentioned earlier, this is my primary portrait lens when I'm doing my everyday photography. And as I mentioned earlier as well, this is really nice for that half body portrait and also full body portrait. The combination of the focal length and the aperture really makes it easy to isolate the subject which is quite important for portrait and also as I mentioned earlier this is a really nice focal length because you can have this kind of Goldilocks distance between yourself and your subject when you're doing portrait and I really like that this is quite a good benefit compared to longer telephoto focal lengths for portraits like the 75mm or 100mm where you have to be really far from your subject and that can make a little bit of issue especially when you're trying to communicate with your subject when you're doing portrait. However, I tried to stay away from using the Olympus 45mm to shoot headshot portraits. You know, I really think that this focal length worked best for, as I said earlier, half body portrait or even full body portrait. For headshots, I prefer something longer. But this is a very subjective matter. I know some people can do a headshot portrait comfortably with this kind of focal length. So yeah, just make sure that you try first, you experiment with this focal length for headshots and try to find your comfort zone. 
Apart from portrait photography, I also use the Olympus 45mm sometimes for landscape photography. I think it did really well for landscape, especially if you have a clear subject in the picture or a clear point of interest in your landscape picture, for example, like a tree in the middle of the frame. However, even if you don't have a clear point of interest in your picture, the Olympus 45mm still works well for landscape photography in my opinion. I think it can give that unique compression kind of look that looks really nice, especially for distant landscape. You know, uh, this kind of picture can really complement the usual wide angle landscape picture pretty well. So this is a nice alternative for landscape photography as well. However, I have to be honest with you that I don't really use this lens that much for landscape photography simply because this is a fixed focal length kind of lens. This is a prime lens and it's only 45 millimeter. You cannot zoom it in, you cannot zoom it out. So for landscape photography, I much prefer to use my Panasonic 35 to 100 millimeter f4 to f5.6, which you can check the review that I just made right here. Another favorite usage of the Olympus 45mm is for close-up photography, especially for product photography as well as flower photography. I think this lens is really, really nice for that. I am able to get really close to a subject. I can isolate it, especially for flower photography. You can really extract a lot of the flower using this lens and kind of Blur the background, isolate the flower really nicely using this lens and it's just such a wonderful lens for that kind of usage. Now let's talk about the image quality of this lens and straight away I can say that image quality is really nice with the Olympus 45mm f1.8. It's very sharp, it is very contrasty, the color looks really nice and also there's no weird stuff going on with this lens. So overall this is really a great lens if you need to depend on image quality. Maximum sharpness of this lens I think can be achieved at around f2.8. However, if you're shooting wide open or if you stop it down even just a little bit, I think the sharpness is already more than good enough for most of my needs. The background blur quality coming up from this lens, especially as a portrait lens, I think it's more than good enough as well. However, be careful when you're shooting with a busy background, especially if there's like three leaves or similar texture, then the background blur or the bokeh can look a little bit busy. Speaking about performance of this lens, the autofocus was really nice, quick and snappy, especially in single autofocus. However, the close focusing distance of this lens is not really that close in my opinion. So if you're using this lens for product photography, I think you're going to struggle a little bit because it's not really that close and you have to be a little bit far away. And I think that is a missed opportunity when it comes to the close focusing distance because the Panasonic 42.5 millimeter has closer focusing distance if I'm not mistaken. Speaking about stabilization, this lens doesn't have the optical image stabilizer built into the lens. So you have to rely on using cameras that have internal in-body image stabilizer such as my Panasonic G85, the GH6, the GH5, the OM1, OM5 new OM system cameras, and so on. Flare, I think it's not an issue with this lens. If you're shooting straight into a light source, maybe you can still see a little bit of ghosting and artifacts when it comes to flare. However, it is pretty standard in my opinion, nothing too crazy. Also, there's no meaningful vignetting or distortion when you're using this lens. Now let's talk about alternative lenses for the Olympus 45mm f1.8 that I think you should consider if you are considering this lens. First alternative is the Panasonic 42.5mm f1.7. I think it is the closest similar lens to the Olympus 45mm f1.8. It has similar size, it has similar weight, the focal length is almost similar, but the Panasonic 42.5mm has optical stabilizer. So if your camera doesn't have in-body stabilizer, I think the Panasonic lens is the way to go. Also, the Panasonic lens has closer focusing distance compared to the Olympus 45mm. So if you're doing 
product photography or you're shooting something close then the Panasonic will be a better choice and the price I think is also similar to the Olympus so yeah consider that lens as well if you're not shooting portrait that much then maybe you don't really need that large f1.8 aperture but you might need flexibility of a zoom lens then the Panasonic 35 to 100 mm f4 to f5.6 is a better choice for you it doesn't have the large aperture of f1.8 but the zoom range is just fantastic from 35 mm to 100 mm you can still use it for portrait but you just don't get that background blur that you get with the Olympus 45mm but this is not too bad. The flexibility of this focal length make it a really versatile lens. This is also similarly sized. I think the Panasonic lens is a little bit more expensive but this is more flexible as I mentioned before. If you are serious about portrait photography, I think you should also consider both the Panasonic 35 to 100 mm f2.8 and the Olympus 75 mm f1.8. So you will choose the Panasonic 35 to 100 f2.8 if you need that flexibility of a zoom range, but you don't want to sacrifice that large aperture. Uh, this has the aperture of f2.8, so not as large as f1.8. But for portrait photography, I think this is still more than good enough. And you know, this is weather sealed. This is larger though than the 45mm lens. So if you're serious about portrait and you don't mind carrying larger lens, you can go with the 35 to 100. However, for ultimate background blur and image quality, I think the Olympus 75mm f1.8 is the way to go. This is just such a superior lens. The sharpness of this lens is just crazy, especially for portrait. I think this works really well. The compression combined with the large aperture of f1.8 can give you that ultimate background blur. Also consider the Olympus 40 to 150mm f2.8, but that lens is a little bit larger than the Panasonic 35 to 100 f2.8. So if you don't really like larger lenses, then I think these two are the maximum size that you want to go. I think there's also this Olympus Pro 45mm f1.2. It is large, it is heavy, it is expensive. So I don't really recommend this lens and also the Panasonic Leica 42.5mm f1.2. Such a great lens but again, this is large, this is heavy and expensive pro lens. So I still much prefer the Olympus 45mm especially if you want to stay in the micro four thirds original philosophy of smaller, lighter but still good enough image quality. And that wraps up today's video. So that is all for today's video. I hope that this video is useful, entertaining, and informative for you. So please comment down below what is your favorite portrait lens or telephoto lens if you don't really do portrait photography. Also, if you have any questions about today's video, please comment down below as well and I will try to answer them. Also, don't forget to support my channel by liking this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel down below. Thank you very much and see you on the next video. Goodbye.